morning, everyone. I am Bridget Lake, president of the Oviedo Winter Springs Regional Chamber of Commerce, and welcome to the Health Connection Series presented by Advent Health. This is our third of six Healthcare Connection Series. These series will focus on the health and well being of our community by providing options to help reduce fears, manage stress, and provide tools and techniques to cope with this challenging time. Today's topic is heart disease and prevention. February is designated as American Heart Month to bring attention and awareness to the prevalence and severity of heart disease in the United States. If you have any questions throughout the program, please make sure that you type them in the chat box and our expert will answer those at the end of the program. Now, let us give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Advent Health. Today's sponsor remarks will be presented by Tim Cook, the CEO of Advent Health Altamont. Tim, welcome and good morning. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Bridget. It's good to be here with you. This is a, always a fun thing to talk a little bit about health. Um, and of course, it's February, so everybody was thinking about Valentine's and hearts and chocolate and all that. And, and, and I think all that love is good for your heart because um, ultimately heart health is about lifestyle choices and and lifestyle choices impact both our physical being as much as our mental well-being. And they're all connected, as you'll probably hear a little bit more about today. But um, we're glad to be part of this. And uh, I think um, we just hope everyone will have an open mind and an open heart to the information and make good decisions going forward in their life. I also just want to give a quick COVID update since uh, I have you all. You know, the numbers uh, have continued to go down. Most of, most of the hospitals, all hospitals in Central Florida are seeing a decrease. Um, but we also know that the um, occurrence of the variants are still around. And so uh, it's really important to still maintain vigilance with masks and social distancing. We wanna continue the, the progression as we get more and more people vaccinated. We vaccinated over 50,000 in the last few months uh, and the state will continue to roll those out to broader and broader populations. So we're excited about that and uh, appreciate the opportunity to bring some heart information to you all here today. Thank you, Tim, and thank you for that update. Our featured Advent Health guest speaker, also named Tim, is Tim Farley, the Director of Ambulatory Services. We are happy to have him joining us this morning. Tim has over 25 years experience in healthcare and has worked for community and academic hospitals and expanding leadership positions. Tim has served as the Cardiovascular Administrator for Volusia, Flagler, and Lake Counties for Advent Health for the past four years, and recently has taken on the role of Director of Ambulatory Services for the Cardiovascular Institute at Advent Health covering all of Central Florida. Tim, thank you and welcome. Thank you for having me, Bridget. Let me uh, share my screen here. Okay, you should be seeing my screen now. Yes, absolutely. Great. Let me, all right. Well, thank you so much, Bridget. Yes, and it is um, uh, the Heart Month. And so we're really excited to talk to everybody about heart disease and prevention. Uh, this is obviously a, a topic that I'm passionate about. Uh, I've spent uh, a long time in cardiac care and, and uh, working with the American Heart Association as well. Um, I'm currently one of my uh, roles is also uh, as the board chair for the American Heart Association for Volusia and Flagler County. And as such, uh, we're really wanting to get out the word on heart disease uh, this month and make sure people know not only uh, what signs and symptoms to look for, but also how to prevent heart disease in the first place. <clears throat> first of all, a little bit about uh, Advent Health and uh, our cardiovascular program. Uh, we are recognized by the U.S. News and World Report as one of the best hospitals uh, in four different adult and one pediatric specialties, as well as uh, five additional cardiothoracic um, um, disease processes. We're also uh, one of a kind uh, and one of the top five uh, heart and lung transplant programs in the United States. Uh, we have uh, continued to grow that program and provide a great service for Central Florida and beyond. Um, we also are a pioneering research center where we uh, do conduct all, over 30 clinical trials each year uh, to, to improve the health of our community. 
So as we talk about heart disease, uh, it's really important for us to get to know uh, some important numbers uh, that you want to keep an eye on. And every time you go to the physician, uh, your, your local doctor, you make sure that you're checking these numbers and knowing what they are and how to uh, improve them. And that's important because heart disease is uh, still the number one cause of, uh, of death in the U.S. And in fact, one, every 30 seconds, someone dies from heart disease or stroke. So it's an extremely important to prevent. Those five numbers that I mentioned earlier um, that the, the American Heart Association recommends that you, you monitor and, and make sure you're uh, keeping under control is number one, your blood sugar. You wanna make sure that that is always less than 100. Your blood pressure, two different numbers there to pay attention to, your, your top number or the systolic number, you wanna be below 120. And the diastolic or bottom number is uh, 80 or below. Important to keep, a, keep an eye on those numbers and make sure you're doing preventative measures to keep those down. Also, your total blood cholesterol needs to be less than 200. Uh, ideal body weight is an important component of a heart healthy lifestyle. And that is uh, keeping your BMI between 18.6 and 24.9. Uh, more about blood pressure, uh, there is a, a kind of a range of blood pressures that we look at, and uh, depending on how high your blood pressure is, it raises your, your level on the, on the guidelines so that you need to have more aggressive therapies and stuff. So again, le less than 120 uh, over 80 is the, is the norm, what we want you to be. If you're anything above 120, then that's when we start getting concerned, so 120 to 129 uh, or um, uh, and your, your, uh, so your diastolic less than 80. High blood pressure then is really anything above 130 and, and you get up to about 180 and that's critical high and you need immediate attention for those. So how do you manage your blood pressure and how do you keep that under control? So hypertension is, is a condition that makes the heart work harder and that's why it's important to keep, uh, keep an eye on that. And if left untreated, it scars and damages the arteries and leads to a heart attack, stroke, or kidney failure, or even eye damage, heart failure, and fatty buildup in your arteries, which causes uh, additional uh, damage to your heart. Uh, women in particular are at increased risk for high blood pressure. And if you uh, are 20 uh, pounds or more overweight, you need to be able to reduce that weight. Also having a family history of high blood pressure is, is something to keep an eye on or you wanna get your blood pressure checked a little bit more frequently. And then also if uh, women who are at the age of menopause are at increased risk for hypertension. It's also important to know the difference between the signs and symptoms of a heart attack between women and men. Traditionally studies uh, by, uh, by research has always been in traditionally in men, right? So the, uh, the traditional heart attack signs and symptoms such as perforation, heavy chest pain, uh, crushing pain in your chest, left, jaw, left arm or jaw pain, as well as nausea, shortness of breath and dizziness, those were all done in, in men. The newer uh, research is really being uh, focused around minorities and women, and women in particular have different signs and symptoms. So, uh, such as uh, you know, difficulty breathing and, and heavy perspiration are two similar signs. But you can also you have a more of a history of waking up at night and catching their breath, uh, having that that um, just waking uh, up really abruptly during the middle of the night, trying to catch your breath is is one of those telltale signs. Also uh, being just generally tired and exhausted, stomach cramps and general pains and aches in the chest area. So it's a little bit more diffuse than say a man, the traditional symptoms of, of a man where you have that, that crushing chest pain and radiating to your left. So any of those sort of signs and symptoms for women, you wanna be able to um, get, seek help immediately so that you can get that looked at uh, and not take any chances, especially if you have that family history or any of these risk factors. So how do you prevent heart disease? So there are a number of key things that you can do to prevent heart disease. Number one, if you, if you smoke, you stop. And there's a lot of different, um, different ways you can stop smoking. Um, AHEC uh, produces some great information on ways to quit smoking. There's lots of different ways to patches and stuff like that that you can do now, such as uh, Chantix and, and other things um, that you can do to stop smoking. Central Florida has a really high smoking rate. So uh, chances are there's are, there somebody on this uh, call who is smoking. So I encourage you to stop. 
uh, an active, healthy lifestyle is very important. You want to aim for at least 30 minutes of moderate uh, physical activity almost every day. But a research shows that even if you do 15 minutes three times a week, that reduces your risk of heart disease. So as much as you can get out there and do a brisk walk or stay active, the healthier and better you'll be. And that also helps you to maintain a healthy weight, uh, which is uh, very important to maintaining a heart healthy lifestyle. Eat healthy, and then we'll go over some uh, some foods that are good for you here in a minute, but uh, choose fo foods that are low in saturated fat, trans fats, and cholesterols, and high in fiber is going to be important to reducing your risk. Controlling your blood pressure, again, uh, anything over 120 over 80 is, is considered elevated, and so you want to be able to, to maintain a, a good blood pressure. And then managing stress, and we'll talk more about that uh, during this uh, the COVID time in particular. Uh, I think everybody's under uh, a bit more stress and sometimes a lot more stress, whether it's uh, due to your job, uh, whether it's due to health issues. Uh, we, you know, most of us at this point know somebody or know of somebody who has, has died of COVID. So there's lots of different risk factors for us that's causing stress right now. So there, it's important to be able to stay active, maintain your weight and, and eat healthy because that also helps you to reduce your stress. Um, other way, other things about stress is stress can be positive or negative. And most time when we're thinking about stress, we're thinking about really that negative stress, but also positive stresses such as, you know, your uh, uh, maybe a um, relative getting married uh, or, or maybe buying a new house, getting a new job. All those things are good stressors, but they're still stressors. And so those are things to kind of watch out for too and make sure that you're also maintaining, uh, again, that's good healthy lifestyle so that you can manage even the good stress. Uh, so ways to maintain or to deal with stress is really, again, exercise, uh, maintaining a positive attitude, doing positive motivational things every day, making sure that you're, you're staying positive and upbeat. Uh, again, don't smoke, that reduces your stress. Uh, don't drink too much coffee or I'll say energy drinks as well, which is, is my poison. Uh, or the uh, enjoy a, also enjoy a healthy diet and maintaining a healthy weight. And learning to manage your stress by doing things like meditation and yoga is an important way to get, keep your stress down and to reduce your risk for heart disease. Uh, so what can we do to promote heart health? Um, again, maintain a good uh, regular exercise and nutritious diet, eat lots of protein, eat red, not red meat, but red foods such as apples, red peppers, strawberries, tomatoes, things that are high in vitamins and fibers. And you can see in the list down below, these are great medications, so to speak, uh, that are um, foods that you can eat every day to reduce your healthy or to reduce your risk of heart disease and improve your health. So those again are apples, tomatoes, um, uh, bananas, garlic is uh, very good for reducing uh, blood clot formation, which should, blood clots can form anywhere, either in your heart, uh, your limbs or your brain. So it's very good to, to eat uh, lots of garlic. Um, avocado uh, reduces your cholesterol. So that helps to keep your blood from being real sticky so it doesn't stick and, and block those arteries. Walnuts also will lower your cholesterol and your blood pressure. And almonds uh, reduces your plaque buildup. And chia seeds also lower your triglycerides, um, improves your triglyceride levels. <laughs> so what do we do if you do have heart disease? How do we um, treat that and, and, um, and make sure that you uh, get to a more healthy lifestyle in the future? So number one, we have lots of different diagnostic and interventional capabilities now. So your traditional uh, thing to do to prevent or to uh, detect heart disease is a regular physician visit, monitoring of your vital signs in your lab work that we already covered. Uh, also, uh, if you start having uh, signs and symptoms of heart disease, one of the first things that will often be done is a cardiac stress test. Um, or other, other imaging capabilities. We also have uh, cardiac CTs, uh, cardiac MRIs, all of which uh, help to diagnose heart disease. Also uh, the traditional cardiac catheterization where they either go in through your groin or they go in through your wrist uh, and they inject dye into your heart and be able to look at those blood vessels to tell whether there's any blockages. And also there's a peripheral vascular interventions and we'll touch on that in a little bit because 
If you are at risk for heart disease, you're at risk for also blockage other parts of your body. Again, your brain or your, or your uh, arms and legs. So it's always important to check all that out. So again, uh, cardiac catheterization is just that injecting a dye into your uh, heart to, to see where that blockage is. And this is just a, a picture of, of your heart. And this is where they would go in through your groin. And again, they can go in through your arm, through the artery in your arm and up into your heart. And again, inject that dye so they can get a good visualization of your heart. Uh, a common treatment for heart disease or a blockage rather in your heart is a thing called a stent or an angioplasty. Angioplasty is just blowing up the balloon in that area of your artery that is, uh, is narrowed. Uh, a stent is an additional procedure where they can put in this mesh looking device that I'm showing on my screen and that holds that vessel open longer and protects it from closing back in the future. Your doctor as they do the heart catheterization will, will determine which is going to be best for you. Uh, peripheral artery disease, just to touch on that a little bit is uh, again, atherosclerosis or blocking the plaque in your arteries, in your legs uh, or arms. Uh, and that can cause uh, you to lose sensation in your arms or legs and uh, can cause damage of your tissue. And over time can cause people to have, um, you know, lose a limb or a toe or a foot. So it's important to be able to check out your blood flow in your, your legs if you also are at risk for, for uh, uh, heart disease, because those do go hand in hand. There are a few common questions that you can ask to see if you're at increased risk. And that's, uh, have you ever been diagnosed with peripheral vascular disease in the past or, or been told you had poor circulation? Or if you've ever had any surgeries, balloon procedure stents of your heart, kidneys, belly, legs, or arms. So any of those put you at increased risk for the peripheral artery disease. And when you walk, do you experience aching cramps or pain in your arms and legs or thighs? If you do, if you answered yes to any of those, then you need to make sure you're letting your physician know so they can do the proper screening and tests uh, for peripheral vascular disease. It's much better to catch this early on and treat it early on than to wait too late and then have the risk of, of having tissue damage in your, in your legs. So what are the risk factors for peripheral artery disease? Uh, smoking, again, is, uh, is one of the biggest risk factors. So, and then diabetes, uh, family history of diabetes. And that's because, you know, both of those things make your, your, your plaque sticky, as well as um, high cholesterol also makes that, those uh, blood um, very sticky and causes the blockages in your arteries. Uh, maintaining a, a healthy blood pressure, again, is important because high blood pressure is a risk factor. And then um, again, coronary artery disease, strokes, many strokes is also uh, increased risk factors for, for peripheral artery disease. There's some simple tests that can be done for uh, peripheral vascular disease. And that is uh, number one, an arterial brachial index or ankle brachial index rather. And that is just doing blood pressures of your arms and legs at the same time and, and being able to see if there's a difference in those pressures. And that tells the physician or practitioner whether you uh, possibly have some blockages in your, your extremities, and if so, that they can do additional testing to see how bad that blockage is. Um, the treatment for peripheral artery disease is very similar to that of coronary artery disease, and that is, uh, you know, your angioplasties and stents and, and, and catheterizations of your legs instead of your heart. And that concludes my presentation today, but I'm uh, open for any questions that you might have. Now, I found it really interesting that men's and women's uh, diet, as far as um, symptoms were different. Is that, it, when was that found out? Because I thought it was always the, the pain in the chest and um, yeah, over the last uh, decade, uh, they've been doing increased research on women, and they have really de determined that, yeah, women do experience uh, different symptoms, and, and there's a lot of different reasons why that might be, but uh, yeah, women have to be more cognizant, because I think uh, when you read those symptoms for women, right, if you think general pain or, or exhaustion, right, my, my wife always says she's exhausted, so I, I'm not sure how she's going to tell whether she has a heart attack now, you know, but, uh, but if she's having any of those other symptoms, along with the exhaustion, and that's a, kind of a telltale sign that maybe you want to get checked out. 
Now you had mentioned this stress test and I've heard about them. Um, can you tell me what it, that entails and when you should really start? Is that something that, you know, when you're in your forties, you should start doing that automatically or only when you find some symptoms? Yeah, it's typically not something that they're going to do automatically unless you have a really high risk uh, family history of it or other risk factors. Uh, but typically it's when you start experiencing some symptoms and, and you uh, go to your, your PCP or your cardiologist and saying, you know, I'm, I'm feeling a little short of breath or, you know, I've been uh, having uh, you know, these, these pains in my chest. That's typically when they would uh, recommend doing a stress test. And that's a, there's different types of stre uh, stress tests, but the most common one is a treadmill stress test. And that's just simply, they get you on a treadmill and they make you uh, walk faster until you start having any symptoms or you, or they monitor you for a set period of time. And if you're not having symptoms and they, they uh, know that you're at lower risk for any heart disease. No, I haven't done one of those, but I heard that they're kind of hard. They're kind of difficult. Those they stress can tests. be. They can be. Yeah, they, they, it's a it's a stress test for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> we do have a question. Why do women during menopause need to be concerned? Yeah, I, I think um, as you age, obviously, uh, number one, you know, when you're in menopause, you're you're at a certain age, right? So that puts you at increased risk. And then uh, just menopause in general, because of all the hormone changes, can put you at increased risk for heart disease as well. Hmm. And is that partial about the family history? Um, is, is that, so it is kind of passed on through heredity or no? It, it can be, yes, it, but not always. So, you know, you can be not have a family history, but have some of the other risk factors or just be in menopause, right? And, and you can have heart disease uh, and even if you didn't have a family history, but that is one of the more common things. Now, the good thing, though, is if you're having heart disease and you don't have a strong family history, then it's much easier to reverse, right? So if you have a family history, you, know, you can't outrun your genes. So, uh, you know, that makes it a little harder uh, to control. You can still control your risk factors, um, but, you know, your family history is your family history. But certainly if you don't have that family history, you can control your weight. You can stop smoking. You can do all those things to put yourself back at really low risk. Now, you mentioned smoking and to quit smoking. I don't smoke. I that's a good thing. But I wonder, because vaping is so popular now, yes. is vaping one of those um, also, uh, is that a risk factor? Do people need to be concerned about vaping? It, it, it is a risk factor. Uh, I have not seen um, recent literature that really um, says how much of a risk that is, because uh, I think it's still fairly new in the research. But certainly for uh, lung disease and stuff like that, it's, it's uh, pushing out increased risk. They have shown a, a link with vaping in that. Hmm. That is really interesting. Now, you were talking about heart healthy foods, red foods, you were saying. Yeah. Um, any, anything else that maybe uh, can help us out with that as far as our health wise? You know, I, I think you know, your your common things where I think we've we've gotten a lot better at knowing um, good foods, right? Uh, but things like broccoli and just any of your your good uh, vegetables and stuff, you want to have a balanced diet. Obviously, low in red meats, um, higher in the good vegetables like you know your darker greens, your redder fruits and vegetables, those things with deeper collars tend to have better uh, nutrients in them and, and be able to help prevent heart disease. Um, and then, you know, fish, uh, your, your, your healthy fats and stuff, you want to be able to get more of those. So fish, lean uh, chicken, things like that. I love fish. It's delicious. <clears throat> Can't say I'm not a steak person though. <laughs> <laughs> well, everything in moderation. Exactly. Exactly. Well, I think that it looks, um, what kinds of fish would be the best is one of our questions. So is it, it do you stick to white fish or, or is salmon the best one for you? Well, salmon certainly is, uh, is an, um, a good fish. The, I don't know, the only fish that I guess I would say is probably more on the bad side is things like your bottom feeders, your catfish and things like that. Uh, those you probably want to avoid a little bit more and eat more of the healthier, the salmons, the uh, cod and things like that that are not uh, the bottom feeders. 
Well, great. I think that has wrapped up our questions. Is there anything else that we didn't touch on? I think we've uh, covered everything. I appreciate you having me today. Oh, oh, there's one more question. Hold on. Energy drinks. Yeah. <laughs> Hold yeah. on. You did say this was your vice. So I, I did. I did confess, right? Confession. Yes. Is good for the um, it says, are they bad for the heart because of the sodium levels or that, is it is something else? You know, that's certainly part of it. Uh, it, it. It does a couple things that's bad for your heart, right? It's a increased sodium level, which d does increase your blood pressure, uh, which is bad. Then it also, uh, it's a high concentration of uh, stimulants at one time. And so just like if you're drinking a really, um, you know, black coffee that has a lot of caffeine in it, right? Um, these, those energy, energy drinks uh, have a lot of caffeine. And if you're drinking too many of those, uh, particularly at one time, then that increases your heart rate uh, and puts more of a stress on your heart. Yeah, Again, and that's er everything in moderation, right? There's so many people who drink that cup of coffee yeah. right in the morning, or they have that Red Bull right in the morning. Um, I, I know that it's it's especially those energy drinks are really becoming popular. Yeah, they're they're, they're habit forming, right? And and so those are the things you guys just got to be on the lookout for. And and if you see yourself you know, taking more and more of those to to stay alert, then you know you probably uh, need to start you know, being conscious about it and backing off and and trying to moderate that caffeine intake. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get back into exercising, which they say gives you energy. So I'm, yeah. you know, when you first start, it's one of those just, whew, you're so much more tired than you were. I know, before. I know. And I don't know about you, but during this pandemic, it's uh, it's been easy to uh, make excuses uh, not to exercise because the gyms haven't been accessible and, and things like that. And uh, But it, it's important to kind of make yourself get out there and do it. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Tim. And thank you to Advent Health for this very timely update on uh, heart health. And thank you, everyone. You have a wonderful day. Thank you.